So let's go ahead and get started. I want to welcome you to the fourth annual Women in Tourism and Hospitality Award Luncheon. We have a sold out group. We are so proud of that. But just think, four years. I remember when this was only a vision. And it went from a vision, it went, of course, to those action sets, development, and finally, implementation. And the good news is, is that next year, this will be a full day conference. And we'll be talking more about that later on in the program. I hope you had an opportunity to network because the main thing that we want to do is to help each other be the best that we can be. So you had an opportunity to reconnect with old friends, but I hope you also had an opportunity to exchange business cards and hopefully information with new friends because again, bottom line, it's our role, it's our job to help each other. And so, uh, Keep that in mind as you go forward. One question that we have asked at every WITH event, and that question is, are you with it? So just think about that for a minute. Are you with it? Now, the theme for this year is change makers shaping the future. So I tweaked it a little bit, personalized it, and I'm going to come back with the question, are you with it when it comes to you shaping your future, you being the change maker, and essentially taking more responsibility, more control of your future? And just by you being here today really tells me, and it really symbolizes, that you are looking for ideas. You are looking for strategies to help you move your career forward. Now, this luncheon and conferences like this is part of a global movement. It's part of a global movement with the intent to inform, educate, inspire, and empower women in their careers to help them move forward. And it's really not coincidental that this event is being taken place during Women's History Month and also right after International Women's Day, which is held every March the 8th. Now, the theme for this year for the International Women's Day was balance for better. Balance for better means a balanced world is a better world. And how do we forge a balanced world? One of the main things that they said to forge a balanced world is to recognize the achievement and accomplishments of women in the workplace. That's the bottom line. Just recognize the accomplishments and achievements of women in the workplace. So this afternoon, what we want to do is that we want to celebrate the achievements and compliments of women in the tourism and hospitality industry. These are women who are with it. These are women who will receive the WITH Award. And these are women who are change makers again in the tourism and hospitality industry. You'll hear more about them as we go through the panel discussion and how they are shaping the future of San Diego's tourism and hospitality industry. And even if you're not in the industry, the gems of knowledge and experiences shared here today will benefit you regardless of your position or occupation. And today, we're also giving our first good guy award to Robert Rauch. He's a good guy. <laughs> and I'm just going to say, Bob is a change maker promoting gender equality not only in his hotels, but also to others in the tourism and hospitality industry. And I know that Bob will be formally introduced, but what I want to say to him right now is that, Bob, your leadership has made others better as a result of your presence. And for that, I want to thank you. There's a saying that I used to use with uh, my leaders 
uh, when I was at SCG&E and Semper Energy. I used to tell them, I said, you can walk the talk or you can stumble the mumble. And I would have to say that Bob is walking the talk. And last but not least, we have the privilege of honoring Leslie Cohen. <laughs> Co-founder of the Cohen Restaurant Group with the Carol Wallace Lifetime Achievement Award. Award. Leslie is a change maker who has for many years shaped the future of San Diego. And one of her restaurants, if you haven't been there, you have to go. For me, one of my favorites is Corvette Diner. Because when you enter there, I mean, you can go back to your childhood. The oldies, but goodies music. I mean, I get in there and I think I'm a star because I sing right along with them. And so, but it's been a favorite of mine for decades. So this afternoon, you are truly in for an awesome program. But before I introduce Barbara Bry, who will be our uh, speaker this morning, giving our welcome address, I want to acknowledge our special guests in the room as well as the dignitaries. And so I'm gonna start off with Rip Ripito, President and CEO of the San Diego Convention Center. Is Rick in the house? And you can hold your applause. I know all of them deserve a big applause, but we'll hold the applause until I'm, uh, until I'm finished. Then we have uh, Joe Terzi. President and CEO of San Diego Tourism and Authority, Tourism Authority. We have Colleen Anderson, Executive Director of San Diego's Tourism Authority. We have Mac McLaughlin, President and CEO of the USS Midway Museum. And again, we have Barbara Bry, who is the President Pro Temp of the City of San Diego, District 1. We have uh, Raquel Vasquez, Mayor of Lemon Grove. We have Nika Bukalova, Chief of Staff, City of San Diego, District 9. We also have with us is Perry Story, who is the Director of Communications uh, for City Council, District 4. And then we have Jacqueline Reynosa, National City Chamber President and CEO. Let's give them all a round of applause. And thank you so much for being here and for really supporting this event. Now I have the opportunity to introduce President Pro Tem of the City Council, Barbara Bride. Council President Pro Tem Barbara Bry was elected to represent San Diego's first city council district in 2016. She is a high-tech entrepreneur and community leader who worked her way through college and graduate school, earning a master's degree in business from Harvard. She is the chair of the Committee on Budget and Government Efficiency, serves as vice chair of the Public Safety and Livable Neighborhoods Committee, and a member of both the Committee on Rules and the Committee on Economic Development and Intergovernmental Relations. You are very busy. Barbara was on the founding team of several local high-tech companies, including ProFlowers.com, which has created hundreds of local jobs. She served as the first associate director of Connect and is the founder of Athena San Diego the leading organization for women in the San Diego tech and life sciences community. Barbara has deep roots here in the community and has lived in San Diego for more than 35 years. She is married to Neil Centuria, raised her two daughters here, and is a proud grandmother. Let's welcome Barbara. <laughs> Thank you very much for inviting me here today. I think the last part, Grandma, is one of the most fun and important things that I do in my life. 
Um, I've had an amazing life, and I owe a lot of my success to ending up in San Diego, uh, which is a community that welcomes newcomers if they have energy, passion, and are willing to work hard. Uh, it's very, I was very honored to be invited to address you all today, especially given my, my background. And my most important role model is my mom, Adelaide Bree. Uh, she was divorced when I was a teenager. She was a single working mom. She earned less than the comparable men. There was nothing she could do about it. She raised me to make me believe I could succeed in the business world. And in 1976, I earned an MBA from Harvard at a time very few women were getting an MBA anywhere. And because of my mom, I've spent a large part of my life empowering other women. It's why I started Athena San Diego over 20 years ago as an organization to empower women in the tech and life sciences community. And I'm very proud that a whole new generation today runs Athena and that it has over 700 members. And what you're doing in your industry is so important because I think when women work together, we can achieve great results. It's really about supporting each other. And as I look around this room, this is a room of very smart and engaged and powerful women. It's also a, one of the best dressed rooms I've been in in a long time. I will, yeah, I've seen many outfits here today I would love to have. But I think one reason I'm so proud of Athena is, and I, and I named the organization Athena um, after the uh, Greek goddess of wisdom and war, uh, because these seemed like fitting attributes to succeed in the business world. And in the tech world, you know, over 20 years ago, it was very, very male dominated. And two years ago, um, no, three, 2016, I was elected to the San Diego City Council. I'm a a, a new politician, new elected official. And at this moment in time, as many of you probably know, um, the majority of our city council is women for the first time ever. Yeah. It's a very historic city council. And for all of us, it's our first time as an elected official. Uh, we're from very diverse backgrounds and we were all the underdogs in our race, and I think often underestimated in our lives. And this may be an experience many of you have had. At the end of the day, we're all in it together, and it's very important to support each other and recognize the accomplishments of each other. And that's why today I'm particularly proud to be here and to congratulate this year's honorees who represent several different areas of the industry, restaurants, conferences, events, transportation, entertainment, and marketing. The women you're going to honor today truly embody the change makers shaping the future theme. I also want to commend and applaud Clara Carter for her foresight in not only establishing this event, but for her own trailblazing contributions to tourism and hospitality here in San Diego. And I want to con thank you. And I want to conclude with a thought that resonates with me as an entrepreneur and as a woman. And as a woman in the business world, for much of my career, I was either the only woman in the room or one of very few. You will meet a lot of naysayers along the way. People who tell you, no, you can't do it this way because we've always done it that way. And when I encounter these naysayers in business, politics, or government, I repeat the mantra, no is only a way station to yes. No is only a way station to yes. Repeat after me. No is only a way station to yes. Thank you very much and congratulations. So next it gives me great opportunity to introduce the woman who's behind 
this event, who created the WITH event, and that's Clara Carter. Clara Carter, we can applaud. <laughs> Clara Carter is the founder and CEO of the Multicultural Convention Services Network. She is an amazing and award-winning trailblazer, visionary entrepreneur. She is a force. Step by step, she is making her long-held dreams for the city and people of San Diego become a reality. Let me just share some of her dreams. First, Clara dreamed of increasing San Diego's hospitality market. So she created her meeting and events planning service that over 20 years poured millions of dollars into the San Diego economy. Then Clara dreamed of increasing San Diego's multicultural tourism market. So she created her nationally recognized multicultural fam tour. And that tour brought in well over $4.1 million into San Diego's economy over a three year period. Now Clara is realizing her dreams of producing her own events, events that reflect her vision and her philosophy. If you know Clara, you know she never questions why. Without a follow-up, why not? If you know Clara, you know that she is a principal, confident risk taker, willing to step outside her comfort zone, disrupt the status quo, and even break through barriers when necessary. And also, if you know Clara, you also know that she has a long-held vision of a diverse, healthy tourism and hospitality workforce and industry where all women can thrive. So in 2015, Clara took her first steps to achieve the vision by creating and forming a forum where women leaders in tourism and hospitality could be recognized and celebrated for their contributions and achievements. She conceptualized the Women in Tourism and Hospitality with awards luncheon, began consulting with key industry leaders, took the necessary action steps, pulling the right team together and executed a sold out event in 2016. That's her first one and it was held at the Lafayette Hotel. And again, which was, uh, thank you, Bob. <laughs> the first event has led to With Awards becoming the most highly anticipated annual held event here in San Diego during Women's History Month. Don't you agree that once again, Clara has exceeded our expectations with this event? And I will start that off with an applause. Some of her awards have included, in 2018, she was recognized as the 25 most influential meeting industry, in meetings industry by Successful Meetings Magazine, 2017, change maker in the hospitality in industry by meeting.net magazine, San Diego Magazine's top 50 people to watch, and San Diego Business Journal, Women Who Mean Business, Honoree, just to name a few. In bringing Claire to the podium, let me just cite one of her quotes that she uses all the time. She says, always be true to your own authentic brand. Go out in the world and create exceptional experiences. We call that giving that triple E, experiences that exceed your expectation. And that is the one thing that we have always tried to achieve. Clara has uh, more great experiences in store for us. The marvelous event is just beginning. And as I said, next year, we're looking at a full day conference. Help me in welcoming to the podium, Clara Carter. Thank you so much, Carolyn, and good afternoon, everyone. 
Good afternoon, and thank you so much for being here this afternoon. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous. I don't know why. All right, so I would like to welcome you to our fourth annual luncheon. This year's theme, as has been stated, is change makers shaping the future. You are in for an amazing afternoon of inspiration and motivation. From our six innovative change making honorees who are leading the way in San Diego. Thanks to our sponsors, the Omni Hotel and your staff. Thank you so much. We so appreciate you. The Port of San Diego, the Patio Group, Four Points by Sheraton, Creative Coverings, San Diego International Airport, Smart City Network, RAR Hospitality, Mary Kay Cosmetics, and Rancho La Porta. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For over 30 years, since 1988, the month of March has been designated Women History Month, dedicated to recognizing achievements, leadership, courage, strength, and love of the women who built and are building America. At MCCSN, we believe it's also an important time to recognize, to one, recognize the fact that these women were and are as vital to our nation as the men whose names we already know. Remind our nation that barriers to women's rights, achievements, and full gender equality still exist. And to remind us that we are in this together. And it takes men and women of goodwill to ensure that every woman is given the chance to fully use their talents to make this world a better place for all of us. The fourth annual WITH Awards Luncheon plays a significant um, part during Women's History Month to honor women in San Diego for their contributions to San Diego's tourism and hospitality industry. It also provides an opportunity for them to share with us their lessons learned about their challenges and their opportunities. It is our hope that after hearing these success stories about their journey, you will be empowered to lean forward in your careers and help to inspire tomorrow's leaders, which ultimately shapes both the future of San Diego and your personal journeys to success. Today we honor and celebrate you, our honorees, phenomenal trailblazers and disruptors in our industry. You are definitely with it. Congratulations to each of you and enjoy the program. Now I have my my other pair of eyes, I can see now. You're beautiful out there, and you are very well dressed. <laughs> okay, the moment that we've been waiting for, and this is to introduce our honorees for the WITH Award. And we're going to start off with Carrie Kapitch. Carrie is the COO for the San Diego Tourism Authority, one of the nation's leading destination marketing organizations. The SDTA represents over 900 hospitality organizations and serves as the San Diego region's tourism marketing engine. Kapitch is a frequent guest speaker at industry conferences nationwide, as well as a guest lecturer at the San Diego State University School of Hospitality. In 2001, she was named as one of the top 100 marketers in the nation by Advertising Age magazine. Other awards include Women of Influence, Allied Person of the Year, and 500 People to Watch. Watch. Welcome, Karen. 
Our next honoree is Yolanda Hernandez. Yolanda M. Hernandez is CEO and president of Five Star Tours and Charter Bus Company. With more than 30 years in the regional and charter motor coach industry, together with her two sons, Yolanda manages a fleet of nine deluxe coaches, three mini coaches to include vans. And they're very comfortable because I have ridden them. <laughs> Originally from Mexico, Yolanda works with multinational national companies to develop transportation and tour programs in an effort to synergize cross-border world expectations and create unique, innovative tour and travel experiences. You can read her full bio on the MCCSN uh, website to see the companies that she has worked with. Welcome, Yolanda. Our next honoree to come up is Madeline Maruso. Marusa. Madeline is VP of Industry Relations, and she has been with PRA Destination Management since 1983, serving a broad base of corporate and incentive clientele. In 1998, when PRA launched its franchise company expansion, Marusa began to oversee key areas of business development for the corporation, national marketing, industry relations, and trade show initiatives. Today, she continues to support the global sales team on strategic initiatives and projects specializing in the incentive group marketplace. Matlin was inducted into the Association of Destination Management Executives International Hall of Fame for lifetime achievement in destination management. In 2018, PRA honored Madeline with the Patty Roscoe Lifetime Achievement Award, Award, and July the 18th is an annual day in her name. Welcome, Madeline. Our next honoree is Sin Brochure. Sin is the president, is the founder, president, and CEO of Jim, Gas Lab Event Management, Inc. San Diego's award-winning event production, management, hospitality, consulting, and promotion powerhouse. Dub the queen of nightlife. <laughs> for, for two decades by various media, Sin has been a change maker shaping the hospitality, tourism, entertainment, nightlife, and special events in San Diego since 1991. Some of the programs have grown into international signature events, bringing in between 20 to 40,000 international visitors per event. These events include the Gas Lamp Mardi Gras, like that, Iris for, Irish for a Day, and San Diego Zombie Crawl. Let's welcome Sam. <laughs> Our next honoree is Pat Fall. Pat, <laughs> Pat began her career in 1975 in hotel catering. She moved quickly through the ranks of several large hotel corporations, from catering assistant to director of catering and convention services by her 10th year. From there, she worked in the party rental industry for the next 18 years, receiving the President's Award for top salesperson from classic party rentals several times. In 2004, she became director of sales for the USS Midway Museum, which now averages more than 400 military events and 300 private events annually. Pat's leadership has produced several awards along the way. The nationally acclaimed Spotlight Award in 2005 for Venue of the Year from Events Solution Magazine. And in 2017, she was hand-selected to become an international live events legacy member. Now, Pat, she was uh, emphatic when she told me, you make sure that you welcome and recognize our veterans and our active duty military, which I am doing. And she also was very adamant to say that I am a Padre, a Padre to the Soul fan. 
And on opening day, that is her national holiday. Let's welcome Pat. <laughs> and our last honoree, but of course not least, is Deanne Snyder. Wow. Oh, my. Oh, boy. This sounds like a party to me. <laughs> Leslie, we're going to have to bring them to one of the restaurants. <laughs> Deanne Snyder is a native of San Diego and has been with the San Diego Convention Center Corporation since 1993. Deanne first came to the Convention Center as a client, organizing one of the first local consumer shows when the center opened on behalf of, lo on behalf of uh, local publication. Moving from client to staff, in 2006, after 13 years as an event manager, she was promoted to director of convention services. In March 2012, Deanne returned to the event services department as director. Deanne's accolades include San Diego ch chapter JV Cunningham Award for Excellence in Service, Professional Convention Management Association's 2002 Distinguished Convention Services Manager Award, an educator, so given all that she does, she's also an educator, and she received Educator of the Year twice for continuing education at the University of San Diego, teaching the event coordination class. Let's welcome Deanne and all of our honorees. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce Karuma Zaki, who is the moderator for today's uh, discussion. Karima is a great example of the American dream. And I want to read all of this because it really tells a lot about what she has done in, term, in, in her life to get to where she is. Born in Cairo, Egypt, to an Egyptian father, and German mother, Karima's family shuttled between Europe and the Middle East until the family immigrated to the United States in her early teens. With degrees in international political science and German language arts, Karima was bitten hard by the hotel bug right after college. Starting at the Hyatt as a management trainee, as a management trainee, she set her sights on becoming a general manager. Again, that vision and starting to work that plan. Despite the fact that there was not a single female GM in any of the major companies and wouldn't be for years. Her first general manager post was with Red Lions Hotel where she was also the first female GM. Karima worked through several mergers which would end with Hilton Hotels while raising her daughter, Raven. Another milestone for Karima was becoming the first female area vice president with Hilton Hotels. Prior to getting that position, she ran the 2000 room Hilton San Francisco while negotiating the most significant union contract for the company at that time. And that's one of my favorites in the Bay Area. <laughs> Karima returned home as VP of development to lead the team charged with building the Hilton San Diego Bayfront, which she named and brought through all phases of design and construction. Bidden again a second time, but this time by the entrepreneurial bug, Karima and partner Debbie Besmer launched above 30,000 feet, helping numerous hotels navigate through financial crisis that created havoc in 2008 and beyond. In 2011, Karima created an open Sanctuet One, a tech spa, the first and only spa using the latest cutting edge technology to deliver services. She sold the concept in early 2017 after six successful years at two locations, but still operates Zinzone by Sanctuet, which supports workplace wellness. Karima has been involved throughout her career in the community, sharing both the Hotel Motel Association and Conventions and Business Bureau, as well as Site Selection Committee for the ballpark. She was also on the Board of Chamber of Commerce, the San Diego Regional Economic Task Force, 
YWCA amongst many other. In addition to Zen Zone by Sanctuary, Karima currently consults with hotels on a variety of issues while investing in real estate across the country. She is fortunate to have her daughter Raven and family close by and enjoys a variety of activities with family and friends. This too is a very dynamic woman who was one of the honorees in 2000, the first, the first year, 2016. Let's welcome Karima. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Well, hello, everybody. We are about to embark on a journey with these ladies behind me. And one of the things that I said uh, to them a couple of weeks ago is that this is all about ordinary people doing extraordinary things, which then makes them extraordinary. And my guess would be that there's a whole lot of you that fit that bill in this room. So again, thank you very much for being with us. For those who know me well, you know that one of the soapboxes that I stand on very often talks about the fact that people don't really know what this industry does and how much we contribute. The fact that we're the third largest industry in San Diego and that we provide a myriad of, of career opportunities. One of the things that we hope to do next year with our one, one uh, day conference is to help people identify the career paths so that people can really see which way um, they can go in, in so many different ways. And the ladies behind me here represent such a breadth of uh, experiences and the things that they bring to the table. Um, one story that I tell sometimes, and uh, my friend Debbie Besmer, who's here today, was actually in the room when it happened. We had a pre-convention meeting. I'm out of the hotel business. We know this now. Uh, we had a pre-convention meeting, and there was a lady who was explaining to us what the purpose of the meeting was. So she said, it's a sales conference, it's our kickoff year, you know, we do this thing called a budget, and then we build the top line, and it's where the revenue comes in, and then there are some expenses, and that brings us to the bottom line. The company's very bottom line oriented, so we have to drive the top revenue. And as I was listening to the story, I thought to myself, this lady does things that we don't know what budgets are. I think she thinks that we, you know, that I as GM walk to the front desk at the end of the day, collect the money in a bag, run it over to the bank, and kind of hope and pray that whatever expenses are coming down the pike are met by what we just collected. I really believe that she didn't understand that, you know, we prepared dozens of reams of paper worth of budget with, with very sophisticated ways of looking at our business. So I think that one of the things that we want to do with, with sharing the stories of these ladies is to get to understand a little bit more what they do and, and their thought process and how they've come here. Um, so today's discussion is all about that. We're going to take them through kind of a sequential uh, process to get some of these answers um, from them that I think will enlighten everybody. So thank you very much. I love being here. I love this group. And we'll get started with these ladies. Everybody can see everybody? Yay. Ladies, there's microphones in front of you. We're going to share these. I'm actually going to be selfish and hold on to my own. And uh, let's get started, everybody. OK, so the first discussion point um, is based on inspiration. And we know um, there's a lot to say about those things. Indira Gandhi said, there are two kinds of people, those who do the work and those who take the credit. Try to be in the first group, there's a lot less competition there. Okay, and this question is for Deanne and Carrie. The question is, our lives are shaped sometimes by a series of small events or a big events that wakes us up. Things begin to fall in place and we realize we are inspired. By what? and to do what remains an individual experience. Is there anything in particular in your life that has or does inspire you to do what you do? Deanne? Oh, 
Thank you, Karima. So much has inspired me over the years, but I'd have to say first and foremost would be my two children, my daughters. <clears throat> they're not young, they're adults, forging their own experiences now. But as I look at this industry, as I look at my road that I have traveled throughout the years, I'd have to say that there have been many mentors in my life that have inspired me, like Carol Wallace for one, my team over here for two, all the people that have ever uh, impacted me in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but now what inspires me are those that are growing up in this industry, that have taken the opportunity through the education channels, that our industry, when I first started out, there, wasn't, there was no four-year degree program. You fell into this industry, and I was very fortunate. One of the very first times I can remember being truly inspired, because prior to that, for me, it was just making a living. Uh, I worked for San Diego Home Garden Magazine. We were producing consumer shows. I had been in advertising sales, and I had been thrust into doing these consumer shows. I thought it was a way to make additional money. And the convention center was being built, and I sat on the Gaslamp Merchants Association, and I was the convention center liaison, and had the opportunity to meet with Carol with a group, and she inspired me as to what this personification of a building could be for our city. And as a San Diego native, I felt such tremendous pride. And the minute that I walked into a hall that wasn't quite finished yet, it was still being built, because we were doing a site visit, I fell in love, and I knew immediately that's where I wanted to be. And 26 years later, that's where I've been. And that has inspired me daily. Thank you very much. Carrie? Let's see if this, oh, it's working, good. Um, well, much like I think what you've already been hearing uh, today, family is the thing that's always inspired me the most. And it could be family from uh, my parents to my son to the people that I work with in the community that I serve. So for me, that's really where it starts at, is that sense of home, and home is pretty much what you make of it, and I can make home wherever I am. The, uh, the idea of being uh, a community servant and doing good for my community has always been something very important to me. When I was growing up, my father was very service-oriented. He was a volunteer, he was a contributor, he was a businessman who ran um, some large businesses, and I found that very inspirational to see how he cared for his employees, how he took care and had really a great deal of pride in the work that he did. So from my father, I learned that, that sense of giving back. And from my mother, I really learned that idea of hard work. She's someone who was not able to go to college. She ended up becoming a single working mom when my parents divorced. And for her, she always told me that that hard work would be the thing that would pay off. I'd never be the smartest person in the, work, in the room or in the classroom, but if I was to put in the time and the dedication, I could do well. And so I wanted to make her proud, and that was something that was very important to me. And as I've gotten older, I think the, the thing that probably has changed me the most was becoming a parent. When I was 35, I had my son, and that was something that radically changed me. I think it made me a far better person it made me a better team member. It made me a better um, contributor. And when I think about inspiration now, it's really what am I doing for him and for his generation? What am I doing to give back to make this a better place? And that's really, for me, where the inspiration starts from. It's, it's from home. Thank you very much. All righty. Our next topic of conversation is the early years. And this is for Pat and Madeline. And Peggy O'Mara says, the way we talk to our children becomes their inner voice. Our lives are shaped sometimes by a series of small events or a big events that wakes us up. Things begin to fall in place and we realize we are inspired. Uh, okay, folks, hold on just a second. So I will ask those two ladies the same thing. For Pat and Madeline, what inspired you in the early years? What drove you? I, I have to say, first and foremost, my mother. 
uh, she became a single mother when I was a senior in high school and didn't even know how to drive a car um, and had never worked a day in her life. Uh, watching her bring her path to a different avenue inspired me every day to become the best person I can be. I have a uh, best friend in upstate New York where I'm from who has known me since the day I was born. She's my honorary big sister and 10 years older than me. And she has told me to remember to always look at the victories that you've made. Don't look at anything you've done wrong, but think about those victories and take those victories and teach them to somebody else. And then in the industry, Nancy Morell Swanson, she was my champion when I first cut into this business in my early 20s. In fact, at 21, she recommended me to become a manager at a small property in Mission Valley, the Mission Valley Inn that doesn't exist any longer. That woman, I watched every day be so calm and amazing that I knew that that was my career path, and I've been in it ever since. Very cool. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> Madeline. Well, Karina, I think we, we're on to after inspiration leadership, so I'm going to address a couple of good leaders that I had early on. So, though there wasn't a hospitality tourism school, thank God there is today, but I ended up starting this business from a sorority at San Diego State where they came in and hired a bunch of us to be hostesses back at Vacation Village. And um, Steve Cushman owned that company, so he was one of my early leaders. And I'll never forget, I know we didn't pay well in our hospitality industry in the 70s, uh, but I remember him saying, just as easy to marry wealthy as it is poor, Madeline. So that was some very interesting early um, advice given to me. Um, but then I also had Patty Roscoe following Steve Cushman and a, a lovely uh, incentive house in between uh, that showed me the world. And one of the two things that I got out of Patty and Steve is their love for San Diego and watching that grow. Uh, and that started very early with me in, col in college. And when I left San Diego uh, in 79 to go for an incentive travel company, and they told me, who's going to book that sleepy, dirty Navy town as a world-class destination? I said, watch. So that was my idea to lead after watching a couple of great leaders ahead and get that inspiration and get back to town and make it happen. So that was a good example of leadership for me. Very cool. Thank you. And for those of you um, who would have perhaps been there a couple of years ago, Patty Roscoe was actually an honoree two years ago. And on another note, if you haven't been to the Midway lately, Pat shared something the other day that I didn't know, which is that there are student programs just about every day of the year, right? They, there are kids on board. They're learning their, their, the heritage, the history of, of uh, the USS Midway, and just amazing to have the kids on board. Okay, moving on. We're going to be talking about the obstacles, and we know that we all have overcome some or many, and this is for Sin and Yolanda. And the quote is, I have stood on a mountain of no's for one yes. And the question is, women have completely different experiences sometimes, whether we lead in a more traditional role or take on a more hardened approach. Either way, where there are overt or covert obstacles you had to overcome, step over or remove in order to make forward movement in your goals. Sin, you want to start us off? So, in order to talk about the obstacles, I first have to share with you how I got into the nightlife industry. In 2000, I opened a 35,000 square foot event center on Broadway, as you may know. It was the state of the art nightclub that put San Diego on the map. And people from Vegas, Las Vegas would flock to San Diego, wait in line for three hours to come to this club. And as a director of special events and marketing, the most glamorous job in the nightlife industry, I became the most loved and hated woman in the nightlife industry. Most loved because, hey, if you know sin, you cut through the queue, you don't have to wait in line, you get in it 
like a VIP. And most hated stem from jealousy and some from women that says, hey, how did she get this job? Who did she have to sleep with? Because as women, your skills are never sufficient. For you to get on top, you must have gone that sex to a mile. And I, you know, I didn't let that get to me. I let my ethics, my professionalism spoke for itself. And within six months of opening this nightclub that put San Diego on the map, I booked a hundred, well, not a hundred, but a million in banquet sales, in special events, which is huge for a nightclub, within six months. And my conscience was clear, you know, I didn't have to sleep with anyone to get the job. So you are going to face jealousy in your industry. But that was the start of my nightlife career in San Diego. And then my next job was to revamp one of the oldest bars in San Diego. It doesn't exist anymore, so I can say the name. It was called a Bitter End. Some old school people may know the name. It's, it, it was one of the oldest bars in San Diego. And my job was to revamp this, this place, to bring sexy back. And as a director of special events, I revamped the special events infrastructure and quadrupled the sales, brought a lot of convention business to the space, was booking events left and right, packing the place night and day. What was the obstacle? I mean, you know, as an event salesperson, which many of you are here, catering sales, banquet sales, I, I booked so many events. I was making so much an event sales commission that my manager, that was a man, came to me, and he was a six foot seven man that towered over my five foot three self, and said to me, it is not right for you to make more money than I do. It is not right for you to make more money than I do. And he subjected me to an environment of hostility. He's cornered me. He's bullied me. And I try to reconcile it. I try to make it better. And when you put your heart and soul to your job, like all of you do in this industry, and through no fault of your own, you are going to meet people that will challenge you, that will put you down. But so I, you know, so I quit. I resigned. You know, people don't quit their jobs. They quit their managers. So I left and started my own company, and I was free from the subjugation. So, and you are go so in terms of obstacles, you will face that, but just have faith in yourself and know that, that those adversities exist to propel you to move forward. So believe in yourself and do not be afraid to take that leap. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yolanda? <laughs> okay. Um, like they say about me before, I'm from Mexico. I'm an immigrant. My parents um, and my ancestor was originally from Durango, Mexico. And we immigrated to the United States in 1957. And it really was really hard for me in the beginning, because I am the one sister, and I have six brothers. Wow. So everybody wants, <laughs> everyone, 
you do this, you do that. And my mother said, uh-uh, you don't do anything for anybody. Don't let anybody put you down. And if they bother you or say something, you know what? Just hit them. <laughs> so it's how I learned to fight. I was a fighter since I was born, I think. Because it was like a seven orange on the table. You had to run to get one. <laughs> Otherwise, you're, <laughs> you're not eating or you don't have any dinner. <laughs> so you just grab what you can and run. Well, I grew up like that also in school. And I'm sorry to tell because I tell the same to my granddaughters. I said, somebody hit you at school, hit them back. <laughs> It is very bad because I've been educated in Mexico and also in the United States. But it's true, men are very powerful. But it was before. Now, beware of the woman. <laughs> because we're going to beat you up. <laughs> so anyway, when I emigrate here, I took English classes in Tijuana. I'm from Tijuana. So I immigrated and I cannot, I had to translate everything. So do you know what I did? I found an American boyfriend who don't speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that he say is burrito, taco, tostada. <laughs> so it was very easy for me. And my uncle said, Yolanda, and if you want to kiss, what do you say? Becho, becho. And I said, no, I didn't say anything like that. So it was really fun, and it's how I learned English. Well, not quite. <laughs> Sometimes I speak with my hands, I speak with my hands. Oh, I want to tell you something very, very funny story. We went to, before in 1957, when you got your green card or the immigration papers, you had to wait in the United States for about four to six months. So my mother said, well, let's go and live with your aunt in L.A. And I said, okay. So we went and lived there. And it was really hustle because in the summer we had to find jobs. So somebody tell us, why don't you go to the factory? It's in some place. I don't remember where. And it's a factory, towel factories. You just go there and they give jobs for Teenager, 15 to 17. So we went there in the bus, we got lost, so a long story. So we cannot find the place, we cannot find the factory, but we see a store. So we stopped to the store with no Mexicans. Everybody speak English. So these men say, what are you looking for? I said, well, we are lost. We're looking for this towel factory. And say, but we say in Espanol. Andamos buscando una fábrica de toallas. And he said, toallas. And then we, we stand up and we go, toallas, toallas. You're not drying yourself. And he said, oh, the bar is about two blocks from here. <laughs> so I say, no, we're not looking for the bar. Factory, factory, factoria. And so anyway, the, I think that was the most funny thing that happened to me in the United States. So <laughs> the obstacles that I found, I worked for the school system for 32 years. My husband is the one who initiated this, um, this business, and he really worked really, really hard. He passed away in 2002 because of the heart failure. But... You know, then I had to make the, should I continue working because I was making a very good money in the San Diego City Schools, or I have to quit and be with my two sons. So I choose my sons. And it was really hard because in the beginning, ex transportation. Can you imagine a fragile little girl? <laughs> I said story, <laughs> but they don't know my inside. I was the only daughter, you know, for six men. So it was my language, a female, the only Mexican-American bus owner in T 
Tijuana and in San Diego and many things. Oh, poor thing, we're going to get advantage of you. Uh -uh. I was tough at them. I five filed and everything and my two children was in the university because I always made sure that they have good education. Because when I'm gone, that's the only thing they have. So it was really tough, you know, in the bus business, they threw rocks on you when you cross the border. You had to deal with two very different government, two different um, inspections, and you can imagine it, but it's, but here I am after 35 years, the business is surviving, and I don't let anybody put you down. We are, the mothers are the most important things in our life, our role models. And also, next to God is your mother and your husband. Uh -huh. Thank you. And then your children. Oh, I just want to say something that um, <laughs> he was the president of the farmer's worker, Cesar Chavez, and say, si se puede. In English, it says, yes, you can. Very cool. Thank you very much, Yolanda. All right, ladies, we're going to take you through a little exercise here. Um, and this is about you having a conversation with you when you were younger. And so some of you might have seen the series on, I think CBS This Morning carries it, where people talk to themselves um, later on in life when they've gathered all this wisdom of the activities and lessons that they've learned and talk to themselves as a younger person and give them some advice and some, some soothing uh, ways of having figured out the path and come over obstacles and those kind of things. Carrie, can we start with you? Thank you. So how many of you have seen the this uh, note to younger self. Have you seen it before? It's amazing. I highly recommend you take a look at it. Just phenomenal, inspirational conversations. So, okay, so note to myself, note to my 20 year old self. Relax, it's gonna be okay. Relax, take the time to stop and smell the roses. Remember that family and health are the most important things. So stop striving so hard to get there. Enjoy that journey more because it is a beautiful and wonderful journey. You'll be surprised by the twists and the turns. There'll be things you did not expect, surprises, obstacles, failures, opportunities that you never anticipated. So continue to have gratitude for every day, for every opportunity, for every bright, sunny morning. Enjoy it all and just relax and breathe. Note to my younger self. Thank you very much. Well said. Yolanda, a note to your 21-year-old self. I, I, I need a, <laughs> can you repeat the question? So if you were talking to yourself, when you were 21. Now that you know how you've lived your life and the journey you've gone, the fact that you have kids and grandkids, what would you say to yourself when you're, when you're 21 years old? What recommendations would you give? What advice would you give? Okay, I think the recommendation that I give is treat others as you want to be treated. You know, because everything comes around. So I always try to be very honest a lot of respect, love my friends, and also, well, I, I know you have to work, but I always give 100% to my, to my job, and I don't bring my problems to the place that I work, and I also be very confident of yourself and try to achieve all your goals. I remember when I was I was young, and maybe everybody remembers that video they call The Secret, and I planned my life through that, through that thing. I made a book, and I put everything that I want in life, what house I'm going to have, my husband, 
the education that I'm gonna give to my children, um, all my goals. I don't know where the book is, but I really did this. And I actually, <laughs> probably my mother has. <laughs> but um, I don't know, but it's true. Everything, even the house that I have, it looks like the house I cut from my magazine and pasted in my book. And it's, it's amazing. It's really amazing because you don't believe what you're going to have. If you, everyone, I always, I'm sorry to repeat this, but I always tell to everybody, if you're born, you are very successful. Just to win to all that spermatozoides or whatever you call. <laughs> very true, very uh -huh. true. Thank you gain you. to millions and millions to, to be born. You're a winner. Yep. Because how many millions of people do you bet? A lot, right? So the day you're born, you're a winner. And I tell my children, you do the best, the best you can for you. Because for me, God provided everything. So everything that I have is for them and they're the love of my life. So Perfect. Thank, thank you very much for listening to thank me. Thank you, Yolanda. Thank you very much. Madeline? All right, I'll go a little shorter. Um, I'm going to talk about note to self in the fact that you need to believe in yourself. And as a young girl, I might not have done that so well, growing to 5'10", and nice, lanky, taller than everybody in my high school. Um, but at 21, I would have said, believe in yourself, take some risks, find some mentors, um, hire people better than you are. Very cool. Thank you, Madeline. Sin? All right, in my 20s, I was a bad girl since then. And I still am. <laughs> the key is to tell yourself, imagine the best, no, the worst, the worst case scenario. If you can handle it, do it. Take that leap. Do not be stuck in a job that you don't love. Take that leap. I feel that everyone here in this room has got so much passion. Take that leap. Believe in yourself. We romanticize our plans, but we fear the execution. And the magic lies in the work that you're avoiding. So take that leap. Thank you. Well said. Mine would be never compromise your ethics. Um, you're going to have, <laughs> uh, when you think the light is at the end of the tunnel, you need to take a deep breath, step back, learn from that, and teach somebody, again, what you learned from that experience, because the light will eventually show up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pat. When Karina gave us this question, I thought about it because arguably I'm of an older generation. Uh, I have to be honest, this is probably the hardest conversation I've ever had to give to someone. Because at 21, I'm not sure I would have listened to myself then, to be honest. I was fearless. I thought I had the world in my hands, and I was going to go places. And I did. You, I would have told myself that you're going to have a lot of challenges. There's going to be times you're going to hear no. But take that no and turn it into a yes. Yes is the most powerful word out there. No matter what you do, if you sell for a living, if you promote for a living, the word yes is always part of our lexicon of customer service. I would have told myself that to calm down to realize that you've got plenty of time ahead, but it does go very fast. And that at each time you reached one of your goals, to reach farther, to instill that in others, to mentor others, to be mentored, to find mentors, and thank them for mentoring you, and then pass it on. Because that's probably one of the greatest gifts you can give the older you get, is to mentor others in our industry and other industries to realize what a gift it is that we have, to pass that information on. We are all storytellers in our lives. 
So tell your story and be proud of it. Never stop and question yourself, which I did a lot of. I questioned myself. Uh, as many people have said, I too was a single parent. So sometimes I forgot how to breathe. So stopping and remembering to stop questioning myself, to breathe, and to realize that every journey that you take, every story that you tell, is another chapter in our own stories, our own books that we have to share with others. And I'm very proud of where I'm at today. I am exactly where I wanted to be. I am proud of this city, of our industry, of what we do, how we've put ourselves on the map in really 30 years' time as one of the leading cities of all tourism and hospitality in the world, and we have nowhere to go but up. And that's what I would tell ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing stories. I hope that this gave you some insight into how these women brought along their careers, strategized their careers, um, and how amazing their journey was to each and every one of them has a story. Um, as I close out this portion, I wanted to address my comments to the men in the room. Um, we, we so often have these events that, are, that celebrate women, and we should, and, and we do. But please know that we love you. And we know that you are husbands and fathers and mentors and that you support us along the way and your support is so important to us, largely because we cannot ever reach a level of equality until you step up, grab us by the arm and help us get there. So gentlemen, please come back year after year, join us and thank you all. Alrighty, that brings this portion to a conclusion. We're going to be giving some awards out here, and then we'll bring the podium back, and we have one very exciting event to go still. Thank you all. Another round of applause, please. How inspiring. Okay, um, I'm just really, really thankful for each and every one of you for your stories that you shared with us today it just enriched my soul and i'm hoping that it did the same for all of you all right and this is one of the reasons why we do this because so often we don't have a chance to tell our stories not to the public and this is really really a good thing and we're just moving forward, and um, I'm just thankful for each and every one of you. At this time, we're going to move right into um, our awards, and I thank you guys for hanging in here with us, okay, because it's, it's a little long of a program, but we're almost done. All right, so at this time, it gives me um, great privilege to introduce or to present the awards to our honorees. And the first honoree is Carrie Kapech. Yolanda Hernandez, five-star tours. Madeline Maruso.
Ben Bolger. Pat Fo. Deanne Snyder. And let's give them all a round of applause. Thank you and congratulations, ladies. At this time, we are going to honor our good guy. The good guy. All right, I'm going, to, I have the pleasure of um, introducing him. This is our first good guy award, as we mentioned. I'm going to read a little bit about this hotel guru. Robert Rausch is a nationally recognized hotelier and president of R.A. Rausch & Associates, a leading hospitality management and consulting firm. Rausch has over 35 years of hospitality-related management experience in all facets of the industry, widely recognized as the hotel guru. Mr. Roush maintains a blog where he expounds upon insights and trends in the hospitality industry at www.hotelguru.com. Along with the blog, he also publishes insights and electronic newsletters. His education includes a bachelor's degree in hotel administration from Western International University and a master's in Tourism Administration from Arizona State University. He is a certified hotel administrator and has served as chairman of numerous tourism organizations nationally in the U.S. He has been directly involved in developing several leading brand hotels, some of which the firm still owns and manages. R.A. Roush & Associate Inc currently operates hotels in California, Arizona, Colorado, with several under development. Women will never enjoy equality in the workplace until men take up the mantle on the front line of the cause. This year, Women Leading the Way in Hospitality seeks to honor a man who is a leader and walking the talk, a man who exhibits a genuine support. And Bob is just that. We honor you today for your unwavering support of WITH, for your vision and commitment to women leading the way in tourism. Thank you for being with it. At this time, Robert Rausch. I'm only going to correct Clara on one thing. I, I told her that we had changed the name of our company so that someday I could retire. We changed it from R.A. Rausch & Associates to R.A.R. Hospitality. Many of you are familiar with us with our 10 hotels. Where did Clara go? Ready to present your 
Now, I just want to make sure everybody here knows how much effort she put in. This is the fourth year. She is absolutely amazing. Look at this room. Good guy. This is about you right now. Okay, so, so I brought, and I thought she said two hours, but I think it was two minutes she wanted me. So I actually just wanted to say one thing. First of all, I, I do want to make sure you know that the reason I have some spare time to have some passion for mentoring and being a good guy is because my team here with the table of RAR Hospitality does such a good job. But if you are a woman in this room and you are facing a need for a raise, a promotion, or a new job, I just want you to think like this. Be more self-confident than you currently are. Be as assertive as you're comfortable with. And even if you're only 50% comfortable with the job you seek, go for it. All right. All right, thank you so much. And to all of you other guys out there, we're looking for you next year. You too can be a good guy, all right? So we're gonna be watching, all right? So thank you very much at this time, Carolyn. Now for the Lifetime Achievement Award. And I get the opportunity of introducing Carol Wallace, for whom this distinguished award is named for. Carol Wallace is the president and CEO of San Diego Theater, Inc. San Diego Theaters is a 501c3 nonprofit public benefit corporation that manages, operates, and markets the San Diego Civic Theater and the historic Balboa Theater under long-term leases with the city of San Diego. The Civic Theater and the Balboa Theater are the performing homes of Broadway San Diego, the San Diego Opera, and California Ballet. Previously, Ms. Wallace served as president and CEO of the San Diego Convention Center Corporation, where she led the Bayside facility for over 24 years. She was responsible for the overall management, marketing, and operation of the facility oversaw a full-time and part-time staff of more than 550 and an annual budget that exceeded 33 million. She has received numerous accolades and awards over the year, including the PCMA's Lifetime Achievement Award and the Charles A. McElroy Award. Let's welcome Carol to the podium. Thank you, Carolyn. It is truly an honor to introduce one of, the, one of the icons of our industry. Leslie Cohn is the co-founder of Southern California's premier hospitality collective, the Cohn Restaurant Group. She is deeply rooted in the San Diego community, donating hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years. Leslie and her husband, David, have earned the reputation of being the most giving and generous restaurant groups in Southern California, making regular donations of time, money, and resources to regional and national organizations such as Garfield High School Foundation, Rady Children's Hospital, Balboa Park Conservancy, Big Brothers Big Sisters, Surf Rider Foundation, Make-A-Wish Foundation, Helen Woodward Animal Center, Special Olympics, KPBS, and many, many more. A true businesswoman in every sense, Leslie and her husband David, small diner that was founded in 1982, has grown to be over 25 restaurants in San Diego, Long Beach, and Maui. I'm coming to Maui. <laughs> <laughs> Believing in the importance of giving back to the community, David and Leslie have, have been recognized for the strong community and industry support, including California Restaurants Association 2013 Restaurant Neighbor Award, the Gaslam Quarter Association, Gaslam Quarter Historic Association Vision Award, the San Diego Press Clubs Entrepreneurs of the Year Award, San Diego City Schools Support and Commitment to Partnerships in Education 
and the Better Business Bureau Torch Award for Marketplace Ethics. Ms. Leslie herself has been awarded numerous accolades for her philanthropy, uh, philanthropy work, including 2015 Lamplighter Lifetime Achievement Award, the 2015 Girl Scouts Cool Woman Award, I like that, the 2011 Business Journal's Women Who Mean Business Award, and Woman of the Year in 2002 from the California State Legislature, among many, many others. So please join me in looking at the video for Leslie. Leslie Cohn, a woman who has never been afraid to get her hands dirty. Born in Chicago and raised in Minneapolis, Leslie Cohn grew up with an understanding of good old fashioned Midwestern hard work. Today we acknowledge her strong work ethic and passion, which have earned her a reputation as a leader in hospitality, an active philanthropist, and an admired member of the San Diego community. In 1982, Leslie and her husband David co-founded Cone Restaurant Group, Southern California's premier hospitality collective. Now, almost four decades later, what started with a small diner serving burgers, dogs, and chicken sandwiches has grown to over 35 restaurant concepts with locations in San Diego, Long Beach, and Maui. A true businesswoman in every sense, Leslie is known for rolling up her sleeves and taking an active role in the operating of her restaurants. In fact, it is not uncommon to find her bussing tables or greeting guests on a busy Saturday night. And while Leslie is involved in making sure her guests are well taken care of, she places the same emphasis on caring for her team members. From managers to dishwashers, Leslie makes sure every team member knows how much they are appreciated and valued. Where Leslie truly goes above and beyond as a restaurateur is with her involvement in the community. She has received numerous awards throughout her career, including the Lamplighter Lifetime Achievement Award, the Girl Scouts Cool Woman Award, the San Diego Business Journal's Woman Who Mean Business Award, and Woman of the Year in 2002 from the State of California Legislature, among others. Under Leslie's leadership, Cone Restaurant Group is proud to support over 350 charities and nonprofit organizations, such as Garfield High School Foundation, Rady's Children's Hospital, Balboa Park Conservancy, Surfrider Foundation, KPBS, and more. The most recent philanthropic endeavor being San Diego's first not-for-profit taco shop, Tacos Libertad, featuring a new local charity each month. Libertad has helped raise more than 75000 since its opening in May of 2017. As Cone Restaurant Group continues to grow and test the boundaries of the hospitality industry, one thing is abundantly clear. Leslie Cone shows no signs of slowing down, and after 35 years in this business, she still isn't afraid to get her hands dirty. Thank you. I'm Deborah Scott, executive chef and partner at the Cone Restaurant Group. And this it was my pleasure, this was my pleasure because Leslie is extremely important to me. Leslie is kind, caring, stern, generous, a great mentor, and most importantly, lots of fun. I met Leslie at the original Indigo Grill. However, I most remember her for that business card she left. I still have it and it reads, lunch again today with a girl girlfriend. Great as, as usual. On a personal level, I attribute much of my success to Leslie and David and consider them family. She is the consummate Jewish mother, and I'm lucky to call her my friend. Hi, I'm Susie Bauman. I have the Bally High Restaurant and Tom Ham's Lighthouse, and I've known Leslie for over 30 years. We met uh, at a restaurant association function. We, we have so much in common. We both run and operate family-owned restaurants. Another thing that is so special to me is her work with Garfield High School. So Garfield is a continuation school. These are at-risk students. Leslie and David have given their heart and soul and a lot of treasure for this project, and she mentored them. And I just thought to myself, what a special thing for this woman to do. So thank you, Leslie, for all that you've done for the industry and for hospitality in San Diego. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Tina Tomashka, president of the Garfield High School Foundation. I first met Leslie in 1997 when she and David decided to be members of the Garfield High School Foundation. 
21 years of the same memory offered to over 500 students. We would never, as a small alternative high school, been able to offer a program like this for our students. They would never have had the opportunity to learn and to gain confidence and walk taller if it would not be for Leslie. Leslie, this day is for you. You deserve it. All your hard work, your kind, loving heart for students who have challenges in their lives, that you've helped make them a better person. And we thank you so much, Leslie. Congratulations. Hi, my name is Jim Floros. I'm the president and CEO of the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank. I first met Leslie when I came to the San Diego Food Bank. They had already been big supporters, and I had never really had the pleasure of knowing her beforehand. And since then, we have developed a wonderful friendship, and she has been a tremendous partner in all the important work we're doing in this community. Because of their tremendous support uh, throughout the years, we thought, you know what, we're going to uh, honor her and David at our gala. And so now them, along with the Cohen family, they're actually sponsoring nine of our uh, Food for Kids backpack programs, helping about 450 kids that don't normally eat over the weekend. I can't think of anybody more deserving in this community than to receive this award than Leslie Cohen. She is such a, a wonderful asset. She gives so much of her time, of her energy, and I can tell you without question that San Diego is a better place because of people like Leslie Cohen. Congratulations, Leslie. You rock. Leslie.
that was dancing. His name is Saul. And so Saul started with us at the Corvette Diner at the beginning in 1987. And he still looks 12. <laughs> but to be um, honest, I'm really, I was so honored and so surprised when Clara called me about this Lifetime Achievement Award. My first thought was, I'm not ready to hang up my boots yet. But <laughs> all these people who are getting Lifetime Achievement Awards and they're still trucking, right? So that's the name of the game. I am so honored to be up here and mentioned in the same sentence as Carol Wallace, who's like an icon in this industry, when she came to San Diego in 91 and started to amass this fabulous uh, convention center, which was quite controversial at the time, and of course it still is. Some things, some things just never change, right? Um, she dove right in, she helped, and she is the compelling reason, one of the compelling reasons why San Diego is called America's finest city. <laughs> Looking around the room, it's wonderful to see so many women celebrating Win Women's History Month. Each have contributed greatly to tourism, and hospitality and deserve a round of applause. Our journey has been like many of those in the room, finding success, starting small, building, and honestly, David is the real visionary. I'm just the boots on the ground. I, from a toilet that needs unplugging to <laughs> dismissing a dishwasher because he refuses to wear cut gloves and then getting right in there and doing the work. Um, it's, he really is, was taking the big risks, getting so much respect within the city and our industry that I know I would not be up here if it weren't for him. And as Hillary Clinton said, um, it takes a village, and although our support office is small, and God knows what's happening there now since half of them are here, um, <laughs> we've got two tables here, and these are, this is the glue that really helps, uh, you know, just keeps us together. They're operations people, and um, just, I don't know where we would be without them. Um, we, we have close to 3,000 team members, and it's a sense of pride for all of us, really, that most of them have risen up in this industry to go on to do different things. Many have graduated college, been accepted to med and law schools, become executive chefs, and even open up their own restaurants. A story that's particularly meaningful to me is there was an immigrant gentleman who started to work with us in 1989, and he didn't speak very much English. At, he didn't speak English at all, let's put it to you that way. We did a lot of sign language. Um, it, he has become a citizen, an executive chef. He's the owner of two homes with a daughter who graduated college with honors and is talking about law school. So. That's really the American dream. I would be remiss if I didn't mention our son, daughter, and son-in-law who are here also at uh, table 15, um, who we are confident will continue to be on top of trends in the future, put their spin on what has been built, and keep on trucking, as they say. We always have said that had our first business restaurant been a failure, we would have been in the restaurant business for a very short time. Um, none of us work in an, in, in an easy industry, but it's the best one out there. Competition, whether it's a new convention center in the region that's bigger, that, that's bigger and perhaps better to draw people away from San Diego or a newer restaurant that draws guests to other destinations. The challenge is the same. One of our mottos is we want our guests when they leave any of our restaurants to say they are so happy that they can't wait to come back. 
And in conclusion, once again, I want to thank all of you being here to celebrate the Keller Carol Wallace Lifetime Achievement Award with me and to celebrate all the wonderful women who have been honored and contribute great, greatly to the best in the industry. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's give Leslie another round of applause as she takes her seat. We are now nearing the end of this program. Before you guys leave, I would like to just say thank you to the sponsors again. Thank you to each and every one of you who took the time out of your schedule to come and spend the afternoon with us. And I also would like to, um, I, don't know, I don't think that many of you know what the silent auction was about outside. But we're going to try this again. The silent auction really was for our charitable partner, which is Mount McGill High School. You would see the students. You've seen these lovely students that have been you know, assisting us throughout the day. They created a mobile a silent auction app. So if you guys could, this was a school project for them. They put a lot of work into this. And a lot of our industry partners participated in, and donated lots of gifts for us for this program. So if you would kindly take a moment and stop by the auction tables on your way out, that would be greatly appreciated. And at this time, I'd like to thank my amazing committee. Could you guys all wave? I could never have done this without them. So it takes a team to make something like this happen. Lots of hours late, and they took my calls no matter what. And I say thank you, thank you, thank you. I am very gratefully appreciative. So again, um, I say thank you to our mistress of ceremony this evening, Carolyn Johnson. Did an outstanding job as usual. And our uh, moderator, Karima Zaki. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my friend. All right, stay tuned. Again, you guys heard that we're going to be uh, planning our 2020 conference, a with our first WIF conference in San Diego. We are extremely excited about it. And what I would like, it's going to be amazing because it's going to bring in people from outside of San Diego. So we are extremely excited. We've got a team that's ready to go. We're looking for that hotel. So if you guys are out there and you want to host us for 2020, Give me a call, 619-265-2561. All right, so I had to put that plug in. But at this time, I also like to draw your attention to when you get an opportunity to download mccsn.tv. That's where you're going to find the live streaming from this event, and you're also going to find our special edition of Destination Elite which is our tourism magazine. And it's all about this WIF program, all of our honorees, our legacy honorees. I would like to have, at this time, our legacy honorees who are present to come forward and for us to give them all a round of applause because they played a huge role in helping to make this program. I would like for you guys all to stand. I know you guys are in here. It's like eight or 10 of you in the room. Uh, from 2016, 2017, 2018, and now 2019. We're getting ready to get busy. You guys are going to hear more from us. So if you guys can come up here, we're going to take a group photo. The program is officially over, but I'd like to just say thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you. If you'd like to meet and greet with the honorees, you can use this time to do so. Thank you for attending our program. Thank you.